you guys should join my Discord after this video. It's called G-String and there's a link in the description. Yo, what's going on guys? It's G-Miners here. And finally, we have the exotic heavy weapon tier list. A ton of people make tier lists for PVP, but I haven't seen many for PVE. So that is exactly what we're doing today. If you guys are interested in seeing my primary and special weapon lists, link to those will be in the description. And as always, if you enjoy this content, make sure to drop a like and sub down below. Subbing takes two seconds, it's completely free, and you can always unsub later. Just as a baseline for our tiers, we have S, A, B, C, D, and then F. S is going to be strictly for things in the hard meta right now, aka the goaded weapons in D2. Goat. A are for top options, B are solid options with some things in here being for niche activities, C are things that are pretty mid overall, D is where things start to be bad options to run, and then F tier is reserved purely for weapons that you shouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. That's disgusting. I figured the best place to start this list off was with the exotic swords, since we just got a new one this season. Up first though is one of the oldest swords in the game, Black Talon. Swords are great for ad clear and taking down tankier enemies, but what they suffer from is their lack of range. Black Talon makes up for this with this exotic perk, Crow's Wings, which fire extremely hard hitting projectiles. I wouldn't say this ever had a spot in the meta meta of the game, but it's a super well-rounded weapon to use and has some niches like Garden of Salvation speedruns. If you haven't messed with this thing recently, I highly recommend it, and I think it's a perfect fit for the first B tier weapon. Up next is World Line Zero, which used to be a king back in the day. The Warlock skating and World Line nerfs made this thing kind of go from hero to zero, but it's still great for launching players during speedruns, and the Tesseract perk actually does massive amounts of damage. Ear Edge kind of makes this thing a lot more obsolete now, as you can perform launches with that instead. Yeah, like double by it. Ult F4. Get a five minute. <laughs> and save your exotic slot. If E-Redge didn't exist, the launching alone would be niche enough to make it B tier, but I think nowadays it belongs in the D tier. After this came Lament in Beyond Light. Lament is hands down one of the best exotics in the game. It's good for movement, add clear, burst DPS, and even longer damage phases. And then on top of all of that, it has built in anti-barrier rounds, which make it a lot more useful compared to other exotics in end game content. It's also extremely ammo efficient for the damage it puts out. So with all that going for it and the potential to get even better with a catalyst, Lament is our first S tier weapon. And then lastly, we have Heart Shadow, which is brand new this season. I think this is a really cool exotic, but it still feels a bit underwhelming. Heavy attacks fire void projectiles like Deathbringer does, and they make you invisible. While invis, if you heavy attack again, these deal increase damage and weaken targets. I think this is a great weapon for solo GMs and passive play, but it feels like the exotic combo would try to promote higher damage, but then you need to wait for your heavy attack each time to use the weapon again, so the combo kind of feels slow. Overall, I think it's a C tier weapon, which is pretty mid, but if you're a solo player, you'll probably rank it higher up. With swords out of the way, let's move on to machine guns. Thunderlord is an OG Destiny 1 classic. This thing is an absolute beast for ad clear and will likely pop higher in the meta with Arc 3.0. It doesn't chain lightning like some other Arc exotics, but the lightning strikes do deal massive damage, which makes this thing great for master content like the Atheon fight. I wouldn't quite put this in the A tier, but I think it's one of the better options we are going to have going into the B tier. Air Apparent is another LMG that we have, and for PvE, it sucks. I mean, sure, you could use it, and the shield isn't actually all that bad, but you're going to pour through ammo. And in general, it feels like a complete waste of an exotic slot. This was definitely made for PvP, so this is going to be our first F tier heavy. Xenophage, on the other hand, is a beast in PvE. I think this thing is in dire need of an auto-loading or field prep catalyst because of the reload speed, but using something like Machine Gun Holster helps a ton. This is great for ad clear, killing champs, killing majors and ultras, and it can even do pretty decent DPS. I think in general, this is just one of the most well-rounded weapons in all of Destiny. The handling also isn't too bad, but the ammo economy could definitely be better. I don't think it's quite at the S tier level, but it definitely belongs in the A tier. And then lastly, we have the Grand Overture. When I say that this thing might just be one of the best weapons in the game, it's because I'm lying. That was a lie. 
This exotic is a heaping pile of ass. I wouldn't say it's as useless as some of the other F tier exotics on the list, but it's just one of those weapons that you will only ever use for fun. And no, Arc 3.0 alone will not make this thing good. The catalyst definitely makes it better, but if I want blinding ammo, I'm going to stick to blinding GLs. Brand Overture is a D tier weapon. I might as well also get the exotic bow out of the way. Levy's Breath, in my opinion, is still super mid. People are in love with this for some reason. Even with the unstop and a 50% buff, this thing still kind of sucks. Sure, it stunlocks some bosses, but it isn't ever needed. I think it was just so bad that people were happy it is now somewhat usable starting this season. For me, it isn't even worth the unstop rounds, so it is a C tier weapon. Exotic heavy GLs are actually pretty good in Destiny. First up is the old classic, the Prospector. This weapon used to melt bosses out of the sky, but it's now more so used for launching yourself across the map. I think with a buff and a meta shift back towards grenade launchers, it would become really strong again, but it just isn't shining right now. Overall, I think this is mid, so another C tier option. The Colony is one of those weapons that used to have one or two niche purposes, but now it doesn't. Now it's more of a PvP weapon, and even then, it still never seems to get used. I don't think this thing is ever worth running, so it's our second weapon in the F tier. Salvation's Grip, on the other hand, sucks, but does still have a purpose. This weapon is more so just fun to mess around with, but also is good for platforming whenever it's needed. Specifically, if you need stasis crystals, but you also need to be on a different subclass. It also used to work for breaches, which were used in speedruns, but I think that is a thing of the past now. Overall, I'm putting this in the B tier solely for making platforms, as it is a niche purpose. Anarchy used to be the greatest exotic ever made. It was the best at ad clear and for DPS, but the nerfs have been pretty hard on it. I think it's still good for ad clear, but we also have like half the ammo that we used to, so for longer encounters, if you don't get ammo, you're kind of screwed. A catalyst would definitely make this thing pop back into the meta, and I still think it's great for passive damage, good against champs, and then also for spawn trapping in speeds. Overall, I still think it's an A tier weapon because nothing else in the game does exactly what it can do. And then lastly, we have Parasite. This thing came out with Witch Queen and is an absolute beast. By far the best weapon for burst damage in the game. Times 20 Worms Hunger hits like a truck and just about one shots everything other than raid and dungeon bosses. But as soon as that first shot is fired, it falls off hard. This is another weapon that could definitely become S tier with a decent catalyst, but for now, I think that it is a solid A tier weapon. Heavy snipers are up next, and we only have two of these, even though both should probably be special weapons by now. Darcy is up first. The main exotic perk for this gives an additional 35% crit damage anytime we are aiming at something, which is all the time while you're using it, but even with that and it being a 140, the damage doesn't feel like anything special. Cloud Strike seems like a better choice for an exotic sniper, and it's a special, and honestly, so do other legendary snipers. Overall, this thing is a C tier weapon in the current sandbox. That brings us to Whisper of the Worm. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but Whisper kinda just sucks now. I'll be the first one to say I love this weapon, but the nerf to the exotic perk White Nail, the nerfs to damage, and the buffs to other weapons just make this weapon fall off so hard. The DPS is next to terrible, and the total damage output doesn't even come close to that of linear fusion rifles. Hitting all three crits back in the day for a full refund had a pretty decent skill gap to it, in my opinion, so I would love to see the Whisper back in the meta, but for now, it is a C tier weapon. The opposite of snipers are shotguns, I guess, and we also have two of those. Both of these were also from year one, so I would love to see some new ones added. Legend of Acrius, which I tested in a recent video, is actually kind of cracked right now. The total damage is on par with other top options, and same with the DPS it deals. But the range definitely hurts the weapon, along with its handling. But I think overall, this is one of the better exotics we have right now. There are also a ton of higher end activities where you can get close to deal damage, so it doesn't feel like using shotguns are too hard to do. Overall, I think this weapon is a solid B tier choice. And then we also have the Boop Cannon, aka Tractor. Even going from a 50% debuff for all void damage down to just a 30% flat debuff back in the day, this thing is still insane. It's great for ad clear, it does decent damage, and obviously it's great as a debuff source. 
And then it's also used for a bunch of DPS strats like the Worm God combo on Void and Triple Shotgun swapping. No matter the shift in the meta, Tractor has always been a top option, so this is the second S tier exotic going down on our list. Fusions and Linear Fusions are up next. Sleeper Simulant is another D1 classic, and in Destiny 2, I think it still feels great. Especially since the buffs it got last season on top of the Linear Fusion Rifle buff, it's a really solid option for anyone who might not have a God Roll Cataclysmic, Reeds, or Storm Chaser. The extra reserves for the Catalyst are kinda needed for it to hit the same damage potential as other weapons. I still think Legendaries beat this out, but compared to other exotics, it is definitely an A tier weapon. Queen Breaker's bow, on the other hand, is dog shit. It's dog shit. Dog shit. I wouldn't even call this a PvP weapon because most legendaries are also better than this in PvP, so this thing just kind of sucks all around. And for that reason, it's joining Air Apparent and the Colony down in the F tier. Lastly, we have 1K. With Season of the Lost and Particle Deconstruction, 1000 Voices was super strong, but these last two seasons, I haven't seen a ton from it. I think it's still one of the best DPS weapons in the game, but it interacts weird with different bosses that take more or less explosive damage, and it has always lacked in total damage output. Just like Sleeper, I think a lot of other legendary options beat this out, but compared to other exotics, it's a super strong weapon. A tier seems reasonable for 1k. Finally, we are on to exotic rockets to end our list off. There's a bunch of these, so let's just knock out the bad ones. Truth is a D tier. The tracking and mag size is great, but not worth the exotic or rocket slot. Two-tailed fox is also D tier. I've never once found this weapon useful, but I will admit that if it did get some weakening and ignition perks built into it for the void and solar rockets, I think this could be pretty good, but for now it still sucks. And then Deathbringer I think is C tier. It is a really good option for ad clear, but if you're using a rocket, it might as well be galley. And although its damage potential is also great, some of the projectiles always miss or don't hit for max damage. Eyes of Tomorrow just got a buff, which I believe was 50%. The tracking is really strong, and it's also really good for quick bakes on bosses. But then after the first shot, reloading and shooting the second shot really hurts the DPS. I think it's better than Deathbringer, but not by much. So B tier is where I'm putting this. Wardcliffe Coil is another exotic that I think is pretty niche. Depending on the boss you use it against, Wardcliffe is either the most insane DPS you have ever seen, or it's non-existent. I think the tracking also is really good for clearing out ads, and it's a lot less likely to kill you. Definitely not in the A or S tier range, but B tier seems reasonable. And then finally, we have Gallerhorn. This needs no introduction because it's easily the best weapon on the list. On its own, it bakes bosses, but the Wolfpack round buff to other rocket launchers is what makes this weapon so strong. Legendary rockets that hit a lot harder at base get something like a 50 to 60% increase in damage with the Wolfpack rounds. This is like using Div for rockets, but if the Div actually did good damage too, simple choice to put as our final S tier weapon. This is my final list for all exotic heavy weapons in the game. Let me know what you think I got right and wrong in the comments below, and while you're at it, make sure to check me out over on Twitch with the link in the description below. I was thinking of doing some exotic armor tier list as well. If that's something you want to see, also let me know which class in the comments I should start with. Anyways, that's all for this video. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.